and welcome back to another episode on Black Wolf Creative Concepts. This time around, I'm going to attempt my first review of a PC product from an average person's, me, point of view. The item of this week's average review is going to be the Silverstone TD-02 Slim All-in-One Liquid Cooler. Let's see if we can go ahead and jam this sucker into an MITx case, shall we? Now before we get talking about my cooling woes, which I have a few, let's go ahead and get my specs out of the way. My car PC, which is running an i7-3770 underclocked and undervolted to 3.5 gigahertz at one volt and is being cooled by the Cryorg C7. Temps at idle hover around the 39C mark and under full load temps hit about 80C. Now, when running at full tilt at its normal speeds, temps are way off the charts. We're talking 95 to 100C. I found a few issues when I applied the CPU cooler. The C7 doesn't fit fully flush with the CPU. Now, it sits on the CPU, but I can't get a nice tight fit, which is preventing heat from transferring properly. This isn't a huge issue though. When the system finally makes it into my car, it will be running at a much lower clock speed, running at about two to 2.4 gigahertz at about 0.8 volts, and will serve as a traveling Plex server. I'll have another video on this at a later time. So why test it on the car PC to begin with then? Well, for simplicity. I wanna see if the Slim AIO is even going to be a viable option in a small form factor PC. The case I am currently using for the car PC is a Silverstone Raven and I know it will fit with minimal effort. If I am satisfied with the results, I will go ahead and wind up doing another video on the Node 202, modding it and installing this AIO. Or I might just do a video of me water cooling a Node 202. I haven't quite decided yet. of this rebuild, let's talk a little about the testing and testing methodology I'm going to use. For this testing's purpose, I've left all BIO settings at stock and auto presets. This will allow the CPU to run at its max rated speeds and hopefully get close to its max TDP. To test temps, I'm going to use Adobe Media Encoder to render a five minute 4K 30 frames per second video using the 4K 30 frames per second YouTube preset. This will be the most CPU intensive program that's going to be used in my car PC. It should serve as a good test to see how well the TD-02 Slim will do. When this PC finally makes its way into my car, the CPU speed and voltage will be lowered to hit a max 175 watt power draw. The goal is to run as silent as possible, but keep temps as low as possible. This was not an option with the C7 
even with the 120 millimeter replacement fan I had, temps just got too high, causing the fan to spin up too fast. So let's get on with these tests. I'm using CPUID HW monitor to track all information I think is relevant. We have min, max, and current values for voltage, CPU temp, power, clock speeds, and finally, utilization. Right off the bat, we can see that idle temperatures are a little lower than they were with the C7. We're currently sitting at around 36 degrees Celsius. With things on the move, we can see CPU utilization peaking at 90% to 100% across all threads, with clock speeds peaking at about 3.9 gigahertz. Though I really would like to point out that for the majority of this render, uh, the speeds remained at 3.7 gigahertz. I do have to admit, I'm quite pleased and surprised at the temps. 84 degrees Celsius might seem a bit high for a 60 watt power draw, but it is well within operational temperatures for this CPU. With the C7, temps were peaking to the point where thermal throttling was occurring quite often. I do have a number of background applications going on as well, including a Plex server, which is the primary role of this PC. When used in the field, this will be drawing far less power and running at a max 3 GHz, so temps should be considerably lower. So, conclusion time. Compared to the C7 in the same environment, the TD-02 does a spectacular job keeping temps down in a very air-restrictive case. After putting everything together though, I realized that there was actually enough room between the radiator and the GPU to allow for the low profile 120 millimeter fans to be installed on the inside of the case instead of the way that I did it by installing them on the outside. I also came to the conclusion almost immediately after installing the TD-02 that this AIO would most likely not fit into the Node 202 with some moderately heavy modding. Now, if the inlet and outlet ports on the TD-02 were a bit more flexible, then there might have been a good chance that it could have fit with fans inside the case with very little modding. Well, there we go. This was a fun little project and I found the TD-02 to be a decent little cooler for its slim size. I really did go into this thinking it wasn't going to work any better than the C7 due to the case restrictions, but was happily surprised. If you good internet peoples like this video, how about giving me a thumbs up, commenting below, and even subscribing to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it and I always look forward to bringing new content. So until next time, Keep those speeds high and your temps low. Thank you all very much and I will see you.